Hello makers, I'm back and um, I'm, I'm still, um, well, I'm still at home. I mean, we're not technically on lockdown, but you know, we're doing the responsible thing and we're all staying inside and um, well, I, I'm looking for things to do around the house. And this week, well, this week I, you know, see that? That's my torch. I mean, my, it's my, my light source in the room. And I have many of those and they've been like that for like two years now since we moved here, like just a wire and a bulb. Um, so I figured this week I wanna learn how to do lampshades and through 3D printing in Fusion 360. And once I, you know, find a way to do it, obviously I'm gonna show you guys. But before I do that, two things. First, I know you can do it better. I'm gonna say that again and again, I, I understand. If you wanna give me hints and pointers, do so. Just don't bash me in the comments, I'm still learning. Two, Filament One is celebrating the first anniversary of the Profi Box. And if you don't know what the Profi Box is, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, um, you should check them out, subscription box of filament, not samples, like full spools of filament. And since they're celebrating their first anniversary, they have a giveaway with massive prizes, including a full year subscription worth. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you to be able to take part, so make sure you check them out. In the meantime, I'm gonna jump into Fusion 360 and show you guys what I've learned. So we're gonna draw a sketch on the front pane here. Now, there are a couple of measurements that you need to take into consideration. The first is the diameter of the holder of the uh, lamp itself. Now, in my case, it's about 26 millimeters. So if I do a hole of about 29 millimeters in diameter, it should work perfectly well and about thickness of five millimeters. Another thing you want to note is the distance between the holder and the lamp itself or the, the bulb itself because you want to have an idea of the relative position of the light inside the design you're making. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line on the front pane here for the bottom circumference of the lamp. And so if I do 100 millimeters on one side, that would be a diameter of 200. So we'll do 70. Then I'm gonna do a line going upwards, which will be about 20 centimeters in height. And then finally, the circumference or the diameter of the top hole. Now I need 29 millimeters in diameter for the holder. So if we do 20, that's 40. Let's do 30, which would be 60 millimeters. Now, next is, well, the design itself. Now you can use spline, you can use arcs, uh, you can use conic curves. I like to use conic curve um, in kind of like that format. I'll press enter. Um, whenever you do these lines here, uh, bear in mind that you don't want to have them uh, too steep of an angle. Um, anything less than 45 will work just fine, just to have a nice cleaner uh, lamp itself. It also depends on the way you're going to do it. Now, once I have that, what I need to do is finish sketch. I'm gonna choose that area that I just drew. I'm gonna do revolve. I'm gonna select the axes, which is the Z and click OK. Now, as you can see, we already have sort of like the lamp, well, the lampshade itself. Next, I'm going to offset the pane uh, and I'm gonna choose the top part here. I'm gonna go down five millimeters. And once that's done, I am going to split this body using this pane as a splitting tool. And I have um, that part there, which will be the holder of the lamp itself. I'm gonna switch that off for now. And what I want to do is I wanna create a shell out of this. So I'm gonna choose the top panel and the bottom ones here. And I'm gonna do a shell of five millimeters. And as you can see, it's completely empty from inside. Next, what I want to do is do the same thing with the offset plane here. I'm gonna choose the bottom one here. I'm gonna go up five millimeters and I am going to split that body as well. Now this is not necessary, but I'll explain why it makes life easier when printing if you are unsure of the capabilities of your printer. So for now, I'm gonna hide that away. So next, I'm gonna enable the sketches here and I'm gonna go back to the first sketch I did. I'm gonna edit that sketch. I'm gonna grab a couple of lines or I'm gonna draw a line, just slightly at an angle. Um, and then I'm gonna grab that line, I'm gonna copy it by pressing on Control C, then Control V to paste, and I'm gonna move it five millimeters away. I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna finish the sketch. Then 
if I hide that body for a second, what I want to do is click on extrude, choose that, and re-enable the body, and I'm going to extrude outwards. Uh, but I don't know. I don't want it to cut. I actually want it to intersect, and I also want it to intersect symmetrically to do it on both sides. You can do it on one side or two sides. The difference is if you do it on one side. And then click OK. As you can see, now we have a body here. Um, what we want to do is create a pattern, circular pattern. Uh, the pattern type has to be bodies. The object will be this, and the axis will be this is the axis right here. As you can see, we have three. Uh, we'll want maybe 50. And yeah, 15 sounds good. So as you can see, we kind of have like the base shape over there now. If I switch those two bodies on, as you can see now they're connected from the bottom and from the top. Essentially, that would be it. Uh, the last thing you would need to do here is create a sketch right at the top, do a circle of the diameter of the um, holder, lamp holder, which is in my case is 29. Grab that. Once you finish sketch, just cut through it and you'd be done. And in this case, you'd have to print it that way so you don't need any supports. But either way, in this case, you would have these dangling over there. Um, so what you can also do here, now if you go back to this extrude command that I did here, if you do that symmetrical, what will happen is you get double ones and which will make it much more sturdy, much easier to print. And if you remove the bottom part here, you kind of have like tentacles, which is once again, different shape design. In order to make the bottom parts a bit cleaner, uh, you can also do, we'll go here to the last step we did after we sliced and hit the bottom part over there. I'm going to use the fillet tool and click on that line, make it a bit roundish. Once you click OK and you go back to where you were, as you can see, there is a bit of an edge there, so it's just not just flat. Now, essentially, that's that's it. You know, it's it's ready to print. Uh, you print it on this face right over here, and it should print just fine because there's quite a bit of uh, of support there. Once again, you can also do um, you can do more. You can do 20, for example, or you can do let's do 25. So as you can see here there is much more coverage. Um, so it's all a matter of, you know, preferences. You can also go back to the first sketch over here and you can, I don't know, you can modify this like that. And then it becomes, you know, a bit different. Um, it's all a matter of taste. Now, in my case, I use a different little trick. It's very, very, very similar um, in concept. So I'm going to I'm going to create once again, very quickly, um, sort of the, um, the, the, the main shape, just for you guys to get a clue out of what I'm talking about. Um, so let's use the spline this time. Okay, I'm going to click OK. We can move these around like that. What I'm going to do then is click on that spline. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to move it 10 millimeters. Now, what I also want to do is I'm going to draw a line from here, go down five millimeters and draw that. And then I'm going to grab another line and do that. And I'll explain exactly why that is. So first things first, we're going to retrace the steps we did before. Um, we're going to do a revolve of those two. I'm going to select the axes. As you can see, once again, we have sort of like the lamp over there. And then I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to draw those um, two lines that I did before. They don't have to be exactly the same. It doesn't matter. Make sure these are enabled. Then I'm going to extrude as I did before. We'll do intersect. We'll do symmetrical, click OK, and create a circular pattern of 
these two bodies or that one body do 10 okay so we have a new design here now for as you can see there is like we didn't look at the holder of the lamp but in this case what I can do if I switch off those bodies if I just grab that I'm going to revolve that around this axis over here I'll set it as new body I have a plate in there and this all it needs is a bit of a sketch on it do a circle of as we said 29 millimeters finish the sketch cut through that and it's there so now what's going to happen is um, that is kind of like removable as you'll see as I did on mine and if I decide to eventually change lamp holders or I don't know I move to a new place which has different lamps and lamp holders all I need to reprint is that part there or this body right here with a different diameter um, and it would still fit on uh, on this particular lampshade itself it could be thicker or thinner it doesn't matter it just works prints in two parts no supports and it's good to go so there you have it once that's done throw it off on the print and you get going That is it. That's that's how well easy. I I mean it, it it seems relatively easy. It could be easier, it could be done easier, I guess. I don't know. That's the way I've learned how to do it. Um make sure you leave a comment in the section below. Say hi. Um I'll say hi back. That is it. Once again, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Um do the responsible thing, stay home, stay safe, don't spread the ugly germs all around. Um and as always, happy making guys.